What is up, party people? Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is DFW Real Estate with Todd Tremonti. We've got a full studio today. All sorts of thoughts and opinions about the DFW Real Estates today. Lots going on. It's the holidays, folks. It is officially the holidays in the world of real estate. The holidays tends to kick off after the Halloweens. Get into all of the other holidays. Lots going on, including in the real estate market. Things do not, in fact, shut down during, quote, the holidays. Uh, lots going on. Lots of activity in the market. Not as much as previous years, but still plenty going on worthy of our attention. Only Lock. about 50, uh, 50 days and eight hours till Christmas, Top. Listen, one might say... Santa's coming to town! Santa! Oh, my God! Santa is coming to town. Uh, also, one might say, hey, could I still buy this year? Could I still sell this year? We'll get into that sort of thing as we make our way through the show. Lots going on in the news. Some of it worthy of your attention. Some of it probably not worthy of your attention. We'll give you the lowdown on what's going on there as well as take your questions. Give us a call, 214-310-0008. That's 214-310-0008 if you have any questions at all, or you can always find us online at ToddTremontiTeam.com. ToddTremontiTeam.com, where you can search any home from any agent, any brokerage all over DFW. You can also find out what your home would sell for right now what your home equity is. You could even get a cash offer on your house all right there at ToddTremontiTeam.com. This first segment is brought to you by Patrick Glaros and his team over at Cardinal Financial. If you're looking to get a mortgage, looking to refinance, whatever it is you're looking to do, go to PatrickGlaros.com. You can start an application right there on his website. If you want to call him, you can 972-728-3420. NMLS number 308804. Again, Patrick Gleros, G-L-A-R-O-S, patrickgleros.com. All right, folks, if you've got questions, 214-310-0008. As we make our way through the show today, we will talk about what does it actually mean to be in, quote, the holidays, end quote, in regard to residential real estate. This time of year, we tend to turn our attention a little bit um, towards enjoying your home because tends to be the high use time of the year for a lot of us, whether you're hosting others, decorating, um, or, you know, spending a little bit more time uh, in outdoor spaces as weather allows. So we'll dive into all that. We'd love to hear your questions. Get them to us. 214-310-0008. You can call or text. And of course, you can always go to the website, TodgerMoneyTeam.com. If you don't know what your property is worth and you own a property, that's not great. Okay. I'm not upset with you. It's not necessarily going to hurt you in the short term, but as with any significant asset, whether that be stocks or bonds or a business, I believe, and I've told clients for 20 plus years, you need to know what your major assets are worth, especially if it's residential real estate. You need to know, is it an advantageous time uh, to cash out, to upgrade, to downsize, uh, to adjust financing options? You can know that information at our website at literally any time in under one minute. If you just go to ToddTremontiTeam.com and click on the valuation tab right there on the homepage, you can do that from cell phone, tablet, desktop, you know, full price, Courtney, you could even do that from a laptop. You can do it from any device that you fancy. Isn't that what folks say across the pond? Whatever you fancy. Sure. Whatever you like. Yeah. Sure. Why not? A little salty this morning, isn't he, Courtney? I'm not. I'm really happy. Middlesbrough made it into the quarterfinals of the League Cup this week, Todd, huh? You see that? Yeah. Little John loved it. I didn't catch it. I, ah. I missed that one. What time of the a.m. was that game on? It was on Wednesday. Uh, it was on, what day was it? Tuesday at 2.45 in the afternoon. Okay. It's a p.m. game. Right in the middle of the workday. Managed to catch a good uh. chunk of it, though. <laughs> Turn, Don't worry. Turns out you didn't miss, able to catch didn't miss of much of it at all right here from the office. All right, Producer Phoenix, tell everyone hello. Hello. All right, back to you, Ian. All right, so there are five primary variables when it comes to home buying. And I'm going to read them out to you, and then we're going to break them down one by one, okay? I'm listening. So inventory, currently neutral, okay? Some of these are going to be in your favor. One or two might not be. Inventory is neutral. Rates are not great. Seller negotiability is better. Competition is better. And value and pricing is better. You sit on a throne of lies. What if I don't believe those things, though? Well, what? let's talk about that. Yeah, that's that's what we're dealing with, right? So we've been telling home buyers for years and years and years 
uh, that there's opportunity in every market. And then we came up with these kind of five key variables maybe three years ago. And uh, we're always putting together new information and finding ways to have better communicate, lead, and guide our clients here at the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team. But we, we've been training now for two or three years on these five key variables of home buying, right? And there are many others, obviously, but these are five that are what we would call key, you know, primary, dominant, like make or break, should I buy now or not variables. And so if you followed Ian's list, we can go over it again if you want, but let's just take one of them, for example, seller negotiability. That's a weird phrase, right? So a seller's willingness to negotiate with me. In, let's just say 2021, there was almost none of that. So if a buyer wanted to buy a house, and let's just say there was five offers, which was very common at that time, a seller was not very negotiable. That seller would say to you, uh, no, I will not replace, you know, fix wood rot. No, I will not give you um, a discount for that inspection item. No, I will not accept your lower offer, right? Sellers were like, take it or leave it, dude. I'll find somebody else. Um, so what's happening right now in 2023 going into 2024 real estate is that sellers are much more negotiable. Now, are they desperate? Absolutely not. Sellers still have very good leverage in most transactions, but is a seller willing to work with a buyer a lot more to get a deal done? Absolutely. We're seeing sellers pay some title fees. We're seeing sellers that are willing to fix a, uh, you know, an appliance that isn't working or offer a credit to replace some carpet uh, or repair the air conditioning or offer a home warranty. These things that uh, used to be popular in a staunch seller's market kind of went away and they've returned to normalcy. So that's just one example how many of those five key variables are in your favor or neutral right now. There's really only one of them that we would say is not in your favor and I would argue, that's interest rates, by the way. Yep. I would argue they're not bad. Now, I know that's going to make a lot of people angry. The fact is, good or bad is we can all determine that differently, right? If we're going to say that 8% is bad, why don't we say that 3% is bad? Because if we're just wishing for what we want, I would like you to pay me to borrow money to buy the house. If we're all just want what we want. But historically speaking, we're, we're pretty near average historical rates right now. Now, averages are misleading. The fact is we're all used to threes and fours, and now we're in the sevens and some of us eights. So the reality is that's higher. We can call that bad. You might say one of the five is bad, or you might say one of the five is not as favorable as I would like. The fact is the four of the five are either neutral or in your favor as a buyer. Well, part of what makes it difficult with the rates too is that home values went up so much over the last few years. Yep. It's not like they've come down, right? So now home buyers are having to get through the mental hurdle of, yeah, not only am I having to pay 5% more interest rate than I was having to two years ago, I'm having to pay the house prices from two years ago as well. Or higher. Or higher, yeah. Yeah, and that's just the reality. We're not here to mislead you or sugarcoat or tell you that it's always the best time in history to buy. You know, the best time for you to buy a house for almost everyone alive was the day you were born because prices historically have just continued to go up and up and up, whether that's because of inflation or the true value of homes or whatever, it doesn't matter. There have been periods, especially here in North Texas, very, very few periods where home values even went flat, much less any negative periods, maybe two in my entire lifetime that added up to a cumulative three years total where prices were down, had downward pressure. The reality is this. Of all those five key variables, you've got one that a lot of people would determine to be negative right now. You've got one or two that people would consider to be neutral, and then two or three, one to three, that you would consider to be very favorable to a buyer right now. Cool. So you can do with that information what you want. The problem is most people are under the impression that it's a really bad time to buy, and it's just not. It's a pretty good time to buy. Is it the best time ever? No, that would have been the day you were born. Are things in the favor of buyers? Several of the key variables are. Well, when you talk about sellers are more open to negotiating right now, a big part of the reason for that is inventory has gone up. So back when we were talking about absorption rates, we were talking about it, you know, that's the amount of time that if no new homes came on the market, how long we would have until we ran out of homes to sell. Yep. So back when it was like absolutely insane, we had were like 0 0.2 months of inventory, like a week, right? Yep. 
So in most areas now around here, I just looked at numbers for Plano and Allen and Frisco, most price points, you're right around two months worth of inventory. Here in Richardson, you're looking at anywhere from two and a half to four and a half months of inventory. And it's very similar in Dallas and in Fort Worth as well. So you've really seen the amount of inventory go up and a big part of that is probably because buyers are afraid to be buying at the home right now because of the interest rates, but you have an opportunity. Wait, will you, am I on? Yep. Oh, will you remind me uh, when you say we have months of inventory, like what does that mean? Yeah, let me jump in and answer his question and, 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 and define what you're saying. So what months of inventory means is how many months would it take for the current pace of buying to buy up all the houses that are out there. So if someone says to you, Hey, there's two months of inventory. That means at the rate that home buyers are currently buying in that area, we would be out of houses in two months. If no new homes hit the market, that's what that means. Based on the rate that people are absorbing the inventory, this is how many months or weeks or days we have left. Now it's very important to define kind of what's what. And what I mean by that is, if we have less than three or four months of inventory, that is what we call a seller's market. That means sellers have more leverage in the negotiation. That is where we still are in most places. Now, Ian just shared that in several areas, certain price points in certain areas are more at like the four or four and a half months. So those would be on the seller side of a stable middle market. Four to six months of inventory is kind of a standard boring market that truthfully, everyone enjoys that market. There's no great, amazing headlines, but it's like, yeah, buyers and sellers give a little bit. If you're looking for a house, you can probably find it. If you need to sell, you can probably sell. It might take you two or three months instead of two or three weeks, but we're so spoiled, especially in North Texas, that most of us in our most recent decade of home buying and selling have a mentality that it is now normal, that sellers can get whatever they want. Buyers have to fight and struggle and you don't have to deal with all that give and take stuff. Well, we're back to the very beginnings of a, st a somewhat stable market in certain price points. But in other markets, we're still in a seller's market, but way less extreme of a seller's market as before. So to Ian's numbers, if you went from two weeks of inventory to two months of inventory, you're still leaning kind of seller advantage, but way less of a seller's advantage as before. Does that make sense? So, you know, in the grand scheme of the whole spectrum of what markets can be, the opposite end from the last decade would be tons of houses on the market. Buyers can't even buy. And so sellers are begging buyers to buy. I'll give you a Corvette if you'll make me an offer. I've been in those markets. That's not fun. And in certain parts of like, when, when we're giving you these numbers, um, this is from an economist that we're working alongside. And so they're running all these numbers and they do it city by city. So mm -hmm. when we look at Fort Worth as a whole, so yeah. this is not gonna be applicable to every part of Fort Worth, but Fort Worth as a whole, it is a buyer's market. Yeah, it's interesting. It is, it is in the six to nine month range worth of inventory. Now, when you go break down Benbrook, Alito, Walsh Ranch, you know, White Settlement or whatever. This is just everything with a Fort Worth zip. That's the, that's the risk, by the way, of averages, right? So you hear like in the national real estate market, there is no market that that represents. That's the average of like, you know, 2000 cities. It doesn't represent any one city. And that's why we have to be very careful without if you're not getting localized data, which is why one of the big reasons this show exists. So I don't wanna bore everybody with a ton of the data, but all that really means is there are five key variables of buying. More of them are favorable to a buyer right now than are not favorable. The one that most people believe is super not favorable is rates. And you know, the budget is obviously really stinking important but there is more to it than that. And we are helping a lot of buyers right now take advantage of rates as almost like cover fire in like a military scenario. Like that is protecting us from having to compete with tons of other buyers. It's protecting us from getting taken advantage of by sellers who are not willing to negotiate. We do not have a lot of inventory, but we have three or four times what we had two years ago, two and a half years ago when we had like a week of inventory in some places. And now we have seven or eight weeks of inventory in some places. That's still very low on the historical spectrum, but compared to the last several years, 
a buyer has more options right now and they have a little bit more time to think and the seller's willing to work with them and they're not having to compete with as many other sellers, but they are looking at rates that are not favorable. So last thought on that really quickly is if you are a cash buyer right now and you get to take the interest rate thing off the table as a consideration, then it is a very good time to buy. Very good time to buy. People like Dave Ramsey and Barbara Corcoran are saying things that I generally agree with that, look, if that's you, what would you be waiting for? If you think the economy is going to crash and property values are going to go down, that's one theory of why you could do that. But even if that happens, the only times that's ever happened to Dallas-Fort Worth real estate, it was very, 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 very short-lived and values recovered very, very quickly. So why even worry about that? Trying to time the absolute perfect time in the market is nearly impossible. But buying now with almost every economic sign saying the long-term value of property in North Texas is going to continue to go up, 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 and buy with fewer people to compete with, buy with more choices, buy with sellers who are willing to get, negotiate with you, and uh, not have to deal with those rates if you're a cash buyer. Is This is an, a very, very good time to buy. Now, if you're a seller, it's still a good time to sell because, again, like we said, we're still in a seller's market in most areas. If you average out Fort Worth, it looks like a buyer's market, but there are parts of Fort Worth that are pretty significantly a buyer's market, and there are still parts of Fort Worth that are seller's market, but a lot of Fort Worth right now feels kind of like a stable market in the middle where there's give and take. You can get fair value for your house, but not some crazy just make it up number, and buyers can breathe a little bit throughout the process. So um, the, lo the market right now is more logical than it's been in a long time. The media is less logical than it's been in a long time. So we are here to try to help you understand what's really happening. If you are thinking about buying or selling or investing in real estate in the next 12 months at all, we need to talk. Feel free to talk to anybody else you want to talk to, but give us a shot. Let's talk to you about how to gain clarity in this marketplace, how to understand what's really happening, how to make wise choices for you and your family and your finances. We run the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team all day, every day over here, and we would be thrilled to be a resource for you. Give us a call, 214-310-0008. Just save that phone number in your cell phone. You can put it in your phone under Todd Tremonti or Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team or Todd Broker or whatever you like. Put my name in your, in your phone and put in 214-310-0008. Call or text. And uh, we'll, we'd be glad to give you 30 to 60 minutes of our time at no cost, no obligation. We can jump on the phone, on Zoom, or we'll even buy you a cup of coffee, a Coke, a glass of water here in one of our offices in West Fort Worth or in Richardson. And make sure you have answers to your questions and you have a game plan in place. Whether you're thinking about buying or selling right now or a year from now or when the kids graduate or way down the road, most people start that conversation way too late and they run out of options. We recommend you start it as early as you can and take advantage of all of those options. 214-310-0008 or touchremindyteam.com. And don't forget. Find out what your home would sell for right now and under a minute at TodtramaniTeam.com. If you haven't checked your home insurance, your auto insurance, do so with DP Lambert at Goosehead Insurance. You can reach out to DP, dp.lambert, L-A-M-B-E-R-T at Goosehead.com. You can call him 214-614-8595. Look, we've told you for years now, he's saved us so much money over the years. He's getting us the highest and best um, coverage that we can get. And he's getting us it for the cheapest price that he can get it, too. He saved me thousands of dollars over the years. dp.lambert at goosehead.com. Google Todd Tremonti and check out over 700 five-star reviews. Now, this week, there was the uh, NAR case was kind of um, the verdict was put down and the headlines read $5 billion worth of uh, money is going to be paid out to homeowners in the settlement of the lawsuit with the National Association of Realtors. What do people need to actually know about that uh, as it pertains to them here in North Texas? Because there's going to be a lot of new stories that comes out about it. Yep. Okay. Great question. But let me break down the question a little bit because there's massive amounts of confusion here. So first of all, the National Association of Realtors is not the licensing organization for real estate agents. That's done state by state. The National Association of Realtors is a trade association. So just think like a 
you know, the AICPA for accountants or, you know, it's an association of people who generally do the same kind of work. There's some lobbying that goes on. There's some um, advocacy that goes on. There's, you know, group discount kind of things going on. The reality is this. This is a suit. There are several suits going on. Um, there's 1.5 million members of the National Association of Realtors right now, one of the largest trade associations in the world. So obviously, uh, they're involved in multiple lawsuits, probably all the time. There are several right now that are getting massive media. One is with the Department of Justice. This suit that we're talking about is not that one. So it's very confusing what these lawsuits are actually about because the truth is, like it or not, and I do not like it, the average consumer, the average person listening to our show or calling in the office has a fairly low opinion of real estate agents and the real estate agent industry as a whole. And I do not blame them. Historically speaking, agents have overcharged and underperformed. So these lawsuits tend to be about some part of agent compensation. This suit specifically is, as best we can understand, about a group of home sellers in Missouri who are suing the National Association of Realtors, as well as basically all of the major brands, all the big brokerages that have tens of thousands of agents. Now, a couple of those big brands settled with them over the last month or so for tens of millions of dollars, like 80 something million dollars. Yesterday, well, not yesterday, uh, earlier this week, Tuesday, a, a verdict came out where the remaining brokerages in NAR lost and the initial amount uh, was $1.78 billion. There's such thing as treble damages. So the judge could choose to triple those damages. And the damages are supposedly being, uh, whatever, penalized for brands and agents not fully communicating with their sellers what their commission actually uh, goes to. I just think it's bogus. Now, I'm not, I'm not whining. I think you have a population of consumers that don't think very highly of agents. You fill a jury full of them, ask them if they think real estate agents charge too much, and if, I think you're destined to get an outcome like this. Uh, each state has groups of attorneys that promulgate forms, meaning they, they write forms out to protect the consumer, um, and people sign these forms. I think it's going to help clean up our industry, which to do things that we've been doing and training agents to do for more than 15 years, which is to use the documentation to charge what you're worth, not what everybody else charges, and to communicate that very, very clearly. I think the risk of things like this are the consumer base are all of a sudden going to think, oh, they lost. They should all charge less. That's going to be good for me. And it will not be good for the consumer. So we can talk more about that in the, later in the show. If you have questions, give us a call, 214-310-0008, or text us, 214-310-0008. We'll be right back after the break to take your questions about anything real estate related as we head into the holiday market. Google Todd Tremonti and check out over 700 five-star reviews. Welcome back, folks. Welcome back. We are actually talking about a $1.78 billion courtroom verdict. What does it mean for consumers? We'll jump back into that here in a little bit. What does it mean for consumers that it's the holidays? That's more more important question we're getting from home buyers and sellers right now. And also, what does it look like to actually just enjoy your home and the value of it that's not financial? And it's not about buying and selling and mortgage rates. It's about why we all buy homes to feel safe and protected and enjoy time together socially and eat delicious foods. We'll get into that a little bit, maybe. Send us your questions, 214-310-0008 or online at touchmoneyteam.com. First segment, as always, brought to you by Patrick Lowe's and his team at Cardinal Financial. If you're looking to refinance, maybe you're looking to actually take out a mortgage, maybe you're looking to get a second home, reach out to Patrick and he will get you taken care of. PatrickGlaros.com is where you can go and start an application right on his website. 972-728-3420 is his phone number. NMLS number 308804. And as always, you can find all of our recommended pros and vendors at ToddTremonteTeam.com. Click the radio tab and you will find all of them right there. Okay, let's dig into my favorite topic, the holidays, okay? 
What do home buyers, home sellers need to know? Maybe let's talk specifics on the home selling side of Santa's things. Santa's coming to town. Santa! Oh my God. Plus, 50 days? <laughs> 50 days, Courtney? Okay. Huh? Home sellers, wake up. Quit reading the headlines. Don't believe all the garbage. It is a good time to sell. Now, is it the all-time most prime time to sell? Well, that's hard to answer because most of the homes that we're selling right now are still selling at the all-time highest price they've ever sold for. Maybe 2 or 3% higher than they would have sold for a year ago. Now, it's not 20% higher than a year ago, but it's more. So we're still talking about all-time high sales prices in most areas, not every area, not every price point, not every property type, which is why we need to talk before people go barreling down this road. But this is still a good time to sell a home. As a matter of fact, most communities, meaning cities, you know, with zip codes, whatever, across the United States, see significant dips in activity this time of year. We actually have an in-house strategy at the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team where this is one of the best times of the year if you're selling and buying. So we can sell at that all-time high sales price in a relatively fast period of time, well under the average days on market, and help you buy most likely below market value uh, in the timeline that makes most sense for you. Now, it's November. So if you're trying to get in a home before Christmas, call right this second, 214-310-0008. At this moment, we can still get that done. We have a few people that you know, we've gotten under contract in the last week or two, and they will be in their home before the third week of December. We were literally talking about this this week yep. with all of our coaching consulting clients yep. about what that's going to look like to be able to get home go, buyers go ahead, in. Go ahead and explain. We, by the way, when we're training agents, I'll be honest, we call this the walk back strategy. Yep. And what, what we're saying is your job is not to sell someone a house. It's to help basically what we sell is our professional guidance and then it's to educate and help and protect yeah and the way we do that if i were to say to ian hey could i be in a house by christmas you would tell me what yeah the simplest way to explain it is i would say okay by christmas i'm going to assume that you would therefore want to have at least a week if not two to be able to be in your home unpack and the unpack boxes and get everything done Man, so I that would that put deep. that like december 10th 30 day close on average, obviously if you're cash quicker, let's just go with the averages, 30 day close. We're gonna call that November 10th. We have a holiday in between there as well. So let's take back a couple more days. Let's call it November 7th. Then, yep, today is November 4th. So that means ideally to just go with the averages, you need to be under contract within the next three days to be able to move in and be settled by Christmas. It's doable, but for most people, it takes six-ish weeks to find the right house. So that means you need to like get on it right now if that is something yeah, that you your, wanna do. Your wiggle room is a few days to find it and the couple of weeks of unpacking, yep. right? So if you're like, that would still be very important to me. I've heard the beginning of the show, there's five key variables, several of those are in my favor. I want to buy, I can afford to buy, but I've been letting all the pressure and the anxiety and the fear of making a poor choice hold me back, but I want to buy and I can buy, and it's a wise choice for me, then you need to call right now. You can text right now and Ian will reply to you. 214-310-0008. Literally right now, after you get back from the kid's game or watching the ball game or the mall or whatever. 214-310-0008. Or you can go online to toddtremontyteam.com, click any button, fill out any form, call or text any phone number, and we could get your home, get you into a home before Christmas Day, most <laughs> likely. And the only reason I'm saying most likely is not to like say we can't do it, but you might not fall in love with something by then. Or you might say, look, we love the home, but we want to redo the kitchen. It's fine. We'll buy it, but we won't move in until January. It would be because you chose that. But it is possible, and we would work hard enough to make that happen for you. By the way, if you're the right fit for us and we're the right fit for you, if you're not, we'll point you towards somebody that is. Uh, I think we've got the best group of full-time professional world-class agents in town, but we are not a fit for every single person. We're not trying to sell just the maximum number of houses. We're trying to lead and guide and protect and add the most value, what we call world-class value, to the people that we can most do that for 
with the property types that we have specialization in. So 214-310-0008 or online at DutchReminderTeam.com. Right, we kicked off the show by talking about the five primary primary variables to home buying. A lot of people might have been thinking we were specifically talking about things like single family homes, uh, things like that. How do those variables impact homes on land? Do they still have the same impact as they would if you were buying in a quote, traditional type neighborhood situation? Um, or does it, does it is it different when you're buying a home that's on land? Well, I would say those five key variables do apply, but there are others. So obviously when you get into a niche property type, if you were looking at, let's just say a home on five acres, um, the, the, the mark, all, all five of those variables are the same, but we're not looking at the whole market now. We're comparing to the homes on land market, right? So um, rates are the same, right? Seller negotiability is not quite the exact same uh, because the homes on land market is definitely for the most part right now in a, a you know pretty significant seller's market. So sellers don't have to be quite as negotiable. Now, the value of those land properties is still climbing rapidly, more rapidly than the bulk of the market. So you are going to want to uh, not wait around on that one. That is, you know, the favorability for a buyer right now is that we have seen that slow a bit, but not as much as we've seen in the traditional single family market. So if you're looking to buy a home on land, that is one of our primary specializations you got to give us a call, 214-310-0008. Uh, we had two, I believe, Homes on Land deals uh, close in the last week. And man, there is just almost no such, no happier buyer than someone that for the first time has some land, right? Um, even my family, you know, we, we, we built a new home this year. We tore down an old one and built a new one. And uh, we lived in what we would call a normal house, for the year or so while we did that. And it was the most comfortable home we've ever lived in, but it didn't have the land. And it's like our family just wasn't who our family is. We moved back into the new house or you know, into the new house, back into the old lot. And I actually turned around at one point and I was kind of frustrated because my girls weren't helping us unpack. And I looked out the back door and they were out just running wild in the backyard. And I was like, nope, this is okay. Like This is who we are. If that's who you are or who you think you are or who you want to be, Give us a call right now. We can help you achieve that dream of living on land, but I would not be waiting around for that one. Those five key variables of buying a home are somewhat in favor. They're, they're leaning favorable for a, a land buyer, uh, but I think they will be less favorable uh, going forward. It's just going to be harder and harder and harder to own chunks of land in areas that are accessible to the schools and grocery stores and churches and commutes and things that most of us want. That's been true for a long time. That's not a brilliant uh, look out into the future, but it's true. Give us a call, 214-310-0008. Let's go get those dreams achieved of living on land. You can go to DutchReminderTeam.com or give us a call, 214-310-0008. Now listen, producer Phoenix has got a microphone, folks, and I think he might have a question or two lined up. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, let's hear it. What do you, what's on your mind? What, what questions do you have? What is the best time to buy homes on land? Oh, it's a good one. Um, okay. So to quickly reiterate what I just said, the answer would be now. And that just means, um, before values keep running away from you. Now think about, let me give you a different answer though, because I don't want it to be the cheesy realtor answer of the best time to buy is always now, but the value of land is, like the, the availability of land is so scarce right now for homes on acreage that the values are still going crazy. Now, a different way to think about it as far as like what time of year is always best, um, actually, it, the answer is winter. And here's the reason. Think about a boat. When's the best time to buy a boat and the worst time to buy a boat? Well, the best time to buy a boat is at the very end of boat season when people are like, great, now I'm just going to pay to store this thing for the next eight months and I'm not going to get to use it and I got to get that valve fixed and blah, 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 blah. The worst time to buy a boat is like right as spring hits and people are thinking about like, oh, it's getting warm outside again. Let's get the boat ready. We're going to get to use the boat again. That's when people value them the most and you would have to pay the most. So homes on land is somewhat similar. 
people really dream up these kind of spring, summer nights, even maybe fall, but winter is like uncomfortable to be outside. Maybe, maybe dead of summer, but the problem with that is things are growing well, typically in the dead of summer. So winter is, if you were just thinking seasonally, an ideal time to buy a home on land. The grass doesn't look as good. The plants, the trees don't look quite as good. Um, so that's the seasonal answer. The market cycle answer is now, 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 because Texas land has gone berserk for the last 20 years, especially on the uh, you know edges of DFW where homes on land are popular. So you're talking about everything from you know Wiley, Saxe, Murphy, Nevada, Farmersville, parts of McKinney and Frisco, out to Salina, Justin, Melissa, Alito, Lake Worth, Weatherford, uh, Benbrook, maybe Grand Prairie-ish, Granberry, Cedar Hill. I can keep going all the way around. The answer, the point is, you know, what used to be the edges where like parts of Richardson and Plano are now, you know, three, four, five more miles out. Well, we're, we're, we're there where now Wiley and Saxe and Murphy are fairly crowded and Parker and Lucas are getting more and more, you know, filled in and you're having to go out to Nevada or beyond or uh, Alito or beyond, you know, you know, beyond Frisco, beyond, um, you know, all the areas that five, 10 years ago were the edge. There's a new edge and that land is now being sold by the foot, not by the acre, meaning commercial property, uh, quarter acre, fifth acre lots, because the value is so high. You, and, and, and yeah, normal person can't go buy a home on an acre or two there anymore. You have to go a little further out. So do that now before you're looking in New Mexico. That's my answer to that question. So hopefully that's been helpful to you. Now let's play a game called, um, what is Phoenix thinking? Okay, Phoenix is the intern. Phoenix is a an A straight A student. Are we making straight A's, Phoenix? Yeah, straight A's. He said that with it like, like, no. like he was somewhat upset that I doubted at all, which I didn't. Straight A student, Pierce High School. Phoenix, the intern. When do you think you will buy your first house? At what age? Probably out of college, maybe twenty five. Once I am financially stable. Okay. Now, that's a very responsible, traditional, boring answer, yep. right? Now, let me put a little thought in your brain. What if I could show you a way responsibly for you to buy a home maybe as soon as you got to college or maybe like let's give it a year, like sophomore year. You buy a house. You own the house. You live in the house. You rent out rooms in that house to some of your roommates and even by the time you graduate college, you've now built some equity slash wealth and you've basically lived for free while charging your roommates a totally fair rent that they would have paid somewhere else. And you control your property, you control your roommates and you can either keep that and move on and do it again or you could sell that. And now as you're getting closer to that 23, 24, 25 year point, you've got some equity already from a previous house to roll into your next one and now your first solo house or married house or whatever is either a bigger nicer home or a better investment or in a better area or you just have more cash how does that sound sounds good to me all right so i believe that real estate is not the only way but one of the very best ways to build wealth now other people are going to be like oh here's this other investment vehicle that historically has a better rate of appreciation well you don't get to live in those so you get multiple types of value out of a home right some would even say your home that you live in is not an investment in uncertain certain ways i could agree with them but the fact is long term it's a helpful wealth builder. And if you got to live someplace anyway, and you can do it in a financially advantageous way, which you can, I think people like you who are almost certainly going to go to college and almost certainly going to do well and graduate in four, maybe five years, um, and go on to having what would, most people would think of as a significant income, you're just giving yourself a head start. So I would challenge you to think about that and other people listening to think about that and other people listening to think about potentially if your child is not in a position or motivated to do that, you do that instead of paying 
three or four years of rent for them. You own that property. We help people do stuff like that all the time. Even if you or your child is going to go to college in another market, we'll get you connected to an agent you can trust in any market in America. A, we coach and consult with agents all over. B, we know the best agents all over through different networks we're a part of. So give us a call if you have real estate needs anywhere in the United States or Mexico or Canada, by the way. You can always call us 214-310-0008 or online at DutchReminiTeam.com. Almost went with an elf quote there. It's that time of year, but we're not quite there yet. We played Christmas music in our house on November 1st. Courtney, how do you feel about that? I love it. You, I'm kind of like really feeling Christmas this year. I feel Christmas Let's every go. year. I, here's, the, here's where I come from. Personal faith, personal opinion. I celebrate the birth of Christ all year long, not just in the sure. month of December, not only after Thanksgiving. And let this blow your mind. I can be thankful and in the Christmas spirit at the same time. Get so out for here. all the people that want to call, text, and email after this and say, wait till after Thanksgiving, you do you, boo. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be thankful and celebrate Christmas from here on out. Let's go. And you can't stop me. Todd, what are you reading right now? Ooh, I'm rereading a book right now. So before I get into what I'm reading, let me just explain how important I think rereading is. Here's the thing. We learn at different stages of life, at different levels, at different paces, at different depths, right? So when I had two kids and I read a parenting book, I read it one way. When I had three kids and I read that same book, I read it differently. And here's the thing. Most books are decent. Some books are bad and very few books are life-changingly great. <clears throat> when you find a book that is really good, if not life-changingly great, you should go back and re get deeper levels of that, get richness out of that at different life stages, at different levels of energy and attention. So I'm reading a book right now called Who, Not How. It's technically written, written by uh, Benjamin something, something, but really it's written by Dan Sullivan. So, and the book actually explains what that means. Dan Sullivan has popularized a thought that is not original to him, this Who, Not How thought of when you have a problem, especially if you're a business leader, potentially you lead a home or a family or an organization, nonprofit or whatever, it doesn't matter. If you're a leader in certain capacities, you're going to get yourself to a place where you can't do everything yourself, whether that's in your house, in your business, in your organization. At that point, basically from that point on, you wanna shift your thinking from how can I do this to who could do this? Can I delegate that? Can I build responsibility through my children? Can we share that responsibility with neighbors? Can I hire someone to do that? Can I inspire or encourage or unleash someone's giftedness by letting or asking or expecting them to do it? Um, can I maintain accountability by requiring someone to do it? Whatever the case is. But it becomes a who focus, not a how focus, right? How could I work five more hours for some people is a good thought. For a lot of people is not a good thought. But who could help me achieve that outcome? Who could own this objective is a great deal. We have decided we are, in fact, going to do our annual Pi Day where we celebrate and express tremendous gratitude to our friends, our current and past clients, and all of the advocates all over really the world that refer us business, whether that's by home buyers and sellers, investors, or real estate agents that want our coaching services. And we give them a pie and we celebrate this. So just earlier this week, I reached out to four of our current team members and said, can you own this? Would you be, would you lead out in this pie day event for us this year? So that's me saying, my first thought was, how am I going to get all that done? And I stopped and I went, no, 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 no. Who will help me get all that done. And it's not dumping that on someone. It's offering that to people who come alive when they get to do things like that and will do it better than I would do it, or at least as well. So I'm reading Who Not How, Idea by Dan Sullivan, written by Benjamin someone. I would probably bum him out that I can't even remember his name. Um, Benjamin, drum roll please. Hardy, Dr. Benjamin Hardy. There you go. That's what I'm reading. I like that. It's a good one. I like being on your team and being uh, empowered by you. 
So thanks. I believe that most days. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So we just have about a minute or so left. Maybe. Stick around. You'll find out. That's true. Um, but we are growing our team. It's true. Tell us why. Can I be vulnerable right yes. now on the air, Courtney? I wish you would. This is so hard. It is so stinking hard to find the right fit people for our team. So we are not a normal real estate brokerage, right? So uh, you look around at, I'm not going to name any names, but you look around at all the big brands and for the most part, and I'm not making fun of them, but for the most part, they will hire pretty much anybody. If you get a real estate license, they have a spot for you. It doesn't mean they have a spot for you as like their top leader, but you can then go pay them a monthly fee to get a commission split and they will hope you sell something. That's just not how we work. We treat our team members like family. They are full-time with our team. We only do full-time agents. We do six weeks of in-depth, hardcore, super fun, but really in-depth training. And then we continue to train and lead and guide and resource with technology and leads and mentorship and shadowing and encouragement and engagement and interdependency for years and years and years. We have agents that have been on our team nine plus years. That is not normal in this industry. It's tremendously difficult to find the right fit people, but what they look like is competitive, tenacious, smart, um, at least moderately disciplined and orderly, um, share our values of loving others and serving others and using our God-given gifts to add value in the world. Uh, they're fun people, but they're also committed to excellence. They hate to lose, but they really love serving others. That's a weird combination. If you're listening right now and that sounds like you, give us a call. Give us a call. 214-310-0008. Uh, ideally, you already have a job and you love your job, but maybe you're not getting to fully use your gifts in the world. Um, but if that sounds like you, give us a call. 214-310-0008 or text 214-310-0008. We would love to talk about either our Fort Worth office or our Richardson office, unleashing your giftedness to serve home buyers and sellers at a world-class level or potentially a staff position. We'll talk to you folks, same place, same time, next week. Find out what your home would sell for right now and under a minute at tajmaniteam.com.